Hello everyone. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get this you know, cinematic street fo photo from this photo. Now these photos I took uh, over into Hong Kong on my last trip up there and I took them with my 70D out on monopod using my Sigma 18 to 35 lens. Now I got an ISO 1600 so this get done up there pretty high for an APS-C camera. But aperture f2.8 allowed me to capture the uh, photo pretty good. So let's get over here and see if we can't recreate this photo once again. Okay, let's take our original photo. Let's go into the develop module. Okay, once in here, if you ever uh, did any other tutorials before, you know the first thing I want to do is lens correction. Let's turn on our profile and see that the Sigma 18 to 35 is already detected. Now let's click on color and make sure remove chromatic aberration is also checked. This is important, especially since this is a, uh, a low light photo. Despite there being a lot of light in the image, it was taken at night. I actually took this while it was raining with a camera and a monopod in one hand and an umbrella in the other. As you can tell, there's still quite a bit of water on the road here. Okay. Now, a lot of times I use the regular you know, Adobe standard, but I want to change this this time to camera standard just so we can change up the color a little bit here and it has a lot to do with the way I'm going to process this I want to add more reds and blues to this photo to give it more of a cinematic look okay now as we go up here instead of using as shot I'm actually going to bring this down to tungsten and that further brings in some more reds and blues into our photo here and it's starting to make it look much better already now let's crop this photo down here I'm going to use 16 by 9 this causes us a wide photo and there's a lot of extra street here that really doesn't mean much to the image. So it's really not that big deal. So 16 by 9 and I just pull this down to about right here. And that's about as much of the image I really you know, tell a, a story and all that I really care for. So let's discard the rest of that. And unless you're going to change it for different printing options, 16 by 9 is pretty good here. Okay. Now let's see if we can't adjust some of the contrast. This is a light photo. I want to drop this down. I'm going to try about negative 90 at first. I may have to go back and readjust this. And this is going to allow more detail to be brought out in the image here. Okay. Now let's adjust our highlights and shadows. Normally you always pull these down negative 100 and then up positive 100. I'm not really going to do that here because I want to try to get much data in the image as possible. As you can see I'm working with the histogram up here at the top and I don't want to really want to break out of that too much. Okay. Now let's see if we can't bring this up just a little bit. And I mean just a little bit. So I'm probably plus five, seven or so. Yeah, plus that'll work. And let's drop a blacks down here until we start getting some more detail back in the image. How about negative 18 works just fine. Okay, now this is starting to create a really good canvas for us to work with here. But I'm going to really jack up the clarity here quite a bit. As you can see, this already made the image look really, really good. I went all the way to plus 100 on the clarity here. Okay. Now I want to add more contrast to this. Uh, now this might seem counterintuitive that I took away contrast up here, but then I'm going to add contrast down here on the tone curve because this contrast works more with the color. And I'm just going to simply go over here and click on medium contrast. And you can see that worked really, really well. You know, lowering the contrast up here around exposure really helps to bring out more detail. And this over here uh, down at the bottom of the tone curve, uh, Con tone curve contrast, excuse me, really has to bring more back of the, uh, the detail, you know, in the colors and in the tonal range and stuff. Okay, now to get that done, we want to go down and start some split toning. Now, this is pretty easy here. Uh, 
I actually will click on here first to let you get an idea. You know, the reds are over here, blues over here. You know, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is when you bring up, it brings a certain amount of saturation. So the superior the top is highly saturated and down here at the bottom is very little saturated. Now, as we can see, blues over here are around 200, you know, 220, 235. And the highlights over here or, or in the reds or around you know zero you know not too much as you can see on the H right here mark Fuji hues okay for the highlights here I'm gonna put the highlights in red and I'm already at about one right there let me see if I can pull this down all the way and I'll pull this down to about say 36 we may have to come back and adjust that in a moment Okay, now I'm gonna pull shadows. We're gonna add some blues to the shadows here. And I wanna pull this over to about 240. If you remember a while ago, that was really where the blues are at. Around 235 to 240. 240 works pretty good there. Now you may not see no blue yet. It's cause with the saturation is still at zero. So now we're gonna bring the saturation up and really, really help this quite a bit. And you can see a lot of those blue lights are really starting to kick it in right there. And about 63 looks really good. Now we can start to see a lot of reds and a lot of blues. And this really helps contrast between the uh, images and stuff. Now we just need to really adjust the balance. And about negative 20, something like that work, works pretty good. My negative 23 pretty much nails it dead on. You know, they give it a lot of reds up in here, a lot of blues over in the bright areas, or the shadow areas and stuff. And it's really starting to give it that cinematic look. Okay. Now with the right here, I want to adjust the sharpening right quick. In particular, I want to mask out a lot of things. Let's get our option button or alt key, depending on if you using Mac or PC. Let's bring this up so we can really get that sharpening off a lot of things. I think I'm going to use about 95 here or anywhere between 90. Let's just really get it off a lot of things. So you yeah, that it, the uh, edges here you know, are really accented, but the walls, you know, get that sharpening out of there. All it's really going to do at this point is bring out more noise in our photo. Now we really don't want that. Okay, and our noise reduction, I'm going to bring this up quite a bit. We're in about, about 20, 22 here. That fell on 22. That looks pretty good. And we're gonna bring our color noise up here, reduction to about 50. And that works really good. I start, I really cleaned up a lot of the image here. Man, the image is really good despite being at 1600 ISO. Okay, now let's go back up here. We're gonna work on some luminance here. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna work on the orange and yellows and the blues and purples because those are a lot of the colors that are already in this image. Okay, one way to do it is to grab the little tool here and we can bring those down or up to where we need it. Now I'm gonna auto manually adjust it this one. I want my blues, you know, about where they are there, but I want my purples to come on and get a little darker too. So I'm gonna bring the purples down to probably about 15, works good. And that works pretty good on the blues. And the oranges, I want to darken those in also. We'll pull these in, there's about negative 10 on both. Ah, that work. Not too much here. That's pretty close, that looks really, really good. I think that's about where I had it before anyway to start with. Okay, now we're starting to get there, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, now let's go down here and do a, some post crop vignetting real quick. Let's drop this down. I think I had this around negative 24, 25, 23 before. Right, come on, 25, just move it over just a little bit. Yeah, 25 looks really, really good. And we see we almost got this done now the only thing i like left i really want to do is i want to do a little brushing and i want to add a little you know accent to it so i'm gonna do a little dodging here and so i'm gonna grab my brush tool up here at the top 
as you can see I've already got my preset here you know street light haze that I use and in case you haven't uh, downloaded mine before the what I use here is exposure of plus 50 or not plus 50 plus point 50 I'm not sure I got that clear for everybody a negative 50 on the contrast a negative 50 on the clarity and a negative 50 on sharpness and that really helped me uh, makes a lot of the lights and stuff look really hazy because I want to add some you know, a little more effects to this now the most common brush settings that I use size is variable but the feather is normally around 100 with the flow and density around 75 to 76 if it's between 74 and 76 is close enough now for this particular one I am, may bring up the exposure just a little bit to about one stop here and we can see where we can work with this. I really want to make this really stand out pretty good. Like I said, presets are just presets. They're not set in and stone. Let's see. We'll press that in a little bit. We've got light pop a little bit. A little pop here. A little light there. Pop. Over here on this other side. Make the street light pop through there. A little through here. A little here. A little around there a little bit. Click, click. And on the windows here, on the sign. And then in these windows here. And on the side of the cars here. And let's see, we can get those street lights down there a little bit. A little hazy. And almost a little light through there. There. I think that looks really, really good. And pretty much looks like we're done. Let me just do a good eye over it again. See if we want to adjust the contrast. And about 82 works good on that final contrast at the top. And that really sets the image in really, really nice. And I hope everybody liked this tutorial. You know, I hope you know people you know find this tutorial helpful. You know, to help you know put their street photography in you know new direction. You know, give them more of a cinematic look. And you know, I just hope it helped everybody in general. And did you enjoy it? You know, more than anything. You know, so if you like this video, you know, hit the like button down the bottom. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know, please take the time to subscribe. It's free. It's for you. It lets you know when I release more uh, tutorials like this. And until next time, everyone. You know, thank you for watching.